excuse me Where can I get myself a drink? Hello everyone and welcome to an episode of A Deep Dive with the Wandering Barman where I kind of go into the depths of what cocktailing is why am I doing this cocktail? What's the history of it? Why am I using the booze I'm using? And why am I using how much? Sometimes when I do cocktails, I kind of just show you what's in it and then leave you to go off and do your own thing, which is fine. I get it, you're smart people. But sometimes I like to get geeky on myself and the cocktails. That's where all the fun is for me. So I want to show you today a cocktail called The Killer Queen. Now, anyone uh, that's watched these videos before and watched any of my stuff, I usually go old school, like old, old, like 1900s or the 1920s or even 1850s, prohibition, pre-prohibition and before that. Um, this is a contemporary cocktail. Hmm, yeah, contemporary. It's from anywhere between like 2014 and 2018, 2019. I'm not quite sure. That's the beautiful thing about cocktails. They're always so bloody elusive. No one actually can truly pinpoint the origins of cocktails in general. But this, according to my research, told me that a guy called Robin Wolf, a bar uh, and rotisserie called The Hatch, or just Hatch in California, uh, came up with this uh, beautiful cocktail, uh, which is a kind of twist on a gin martini. So I'm just going to get right into it. So it calls for three maybe four ingredients, right? We need gin, benedictina, and uh, lily blanc. And then we go heavy on some Angostura bitters. So let's start with our gin. Um, the original recipe calls for aromatic gin. Now, those of you that have seen videos before where I use gin, I usually say you don't always have to use aromatic gin. You know these really strong infused gins that have got a lot of wood or a lot of spice or are infused with heavy fruits? Because what they do is they, they unbalance the drink and they overpower the other ingredients that you're trying to use. But this cocktail, the Killer Queen, it really only has three ingredients that we're playing around with, right? So it needs that extra boost of flavour. The Lille and the Benedictina are beautiful drinks, but they're not going to really make that impression on your mouth if there's a clean, crisp gin, which we would usually use. So in that case, I'm using a, a gin called Elixir, and it's a German Berlin product, and I love to use regional product because... It makes you kind of sustainable, you know? You're looking out for the environment. Less travel is a good thing. Um, this is made with Waldmeister. Mmm. Eine geiles deutsche Wort. Waldmeister. And um, in English, it means woodruff. And woodruff is a lovely wee plant that grows in the forest, right? It looks like a weed. And then it's got these beautiful kind of... Um, white petals on it, really small, look like really small daisies. Um, and it's got this beautiful sweetness to it, this this wonderful floral aroma, right? And that's what we're going to use. Now, this has been on my cabinet for a while because I've been using it and trying to put it into a cocktail, but it's such a aromatic gin that it's been quite difficult to use it in anything substantial. It's perfect for this cocktail. It's perfect. So... We're going to go in with 60 mils of our aromatic gin. And then we're going to use our Lily Blanc. Now, what the original recipe calls for, this guy Robin Wolf over in California, he infused his Lily with dried rose petals. It's a good, it's a good Scottish description. Dried rose petals. And um, it gives it a nice floral note. And the thing with Robin Wolf is, I probably guarantee you that he didn't use elixir. He probably used something else that was obviously aromatic and floral. But I tell you, I've infused this lily with the rose petals and the, it complements the floral notes of the woodruff so well. Um, now, a quick note on infusions, uh, since it's a deep dive after all, it's so easy to infuse stuff, okay? All you need is like a big mason jar, um, you know, and that can hold like five litres or something, and then you just pour in a whole bottle of gin or rum or tequila, 
whatever it is that you really want to change the flavor of, and then you can add different ingredients. So it's basically a fun game to play at home is just to infuse different stuff. Um, you realize very quickly that certain things take different times. So if you want to infuse thyme with, uh, or rosemary with gin, it might take a week. If you want to infuse pineapple with rum, it'll only take two days. Maybe apples with vodka um, or cinnamon with tequila. Mmm, spice on spice, you know. Um, fennel is a good one to use as well. It's got this beautiful anise flavour. Um, so play around with stuff, man, because you will be surprised how easy it is. And what's the worst going to happen? You're going to have a bunch of booze in the cupboard that you can put in at cocktails later on. So I want to take... 20 mils of my lovely infused Lily Blanc, just 20 mils. And we see that color change immediately. So we leave our Lily, our amalgamation of wines macerated with fruit, and we go again to the French region, and we go Benedictina, my favorite liqueur at the moment. I don't know why. I just don't know why. It's just brown. It's 27 different herbs and spices, um, all ranging from cinnamon to coriander to Earl Grey tea to red berries and orange peel. And I just find it gives a lovely sweetness to the drink um, that hasn't yet been added. Uh, we've got the boozy floral notes of the gin and we've got the kind of acidity uh, of the lily from the wine. So I kind of want to sweeten this drink up now and I'm going to use just 15 mils of my Benedictina, my beautiful French liqueur. Now that is an absolutely amazing colour so far. Look at it, it's brilliant. But we're going to go in heavy with Angostura bitters. Now you can find Angostura bitters everywhere, every supermarket, every kind of uh, liquor store, uh, alcohol place, Wherever you get your alcohol from, they'll have this. It's a medicinal bitter uh, from South America. Uh, and we kind of want to go with five dashes. And that flavour is going to completely enhance now. So, now we're going to go in with our ice. Our good cloudy ice. You know what it's about. You know what it's about by now. And like I tell everyone, when you're mixing drinks, not too much at the beginning, okay? Not too much at the beginning. Just a little bit. You don't need the, the glass full of ice. You know, if the ice isn't touching the liquid, it's only really cool in the glass. And we don't need that. And that should be us. That's amazing, man. That is truly a good drink. So we just pour in. And what we need for this is a nice big lemon zest over the top. So everyone, look, I love it when you make these drinks at home, get in touch if you've made it, send some photos, let me know what you're doing. Check out all the other videos that I do at buymeacoffee.com. Um, I do loads of deep dives on many different cocktails on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, there will be links in your peripherals to show you where to go. So thanks for tuning in and tune in again. Get myself a drink.